Welcome back to the Sci-Fi Fun blog. Today, we're going to blow your mind thinking about worlds with pressure greater than Earth's atmosphere. So for all you uh, physics fans or aspiring sci-fi writers, let's take a minute to think about what life is like at several atmospheres of pressure. First thing we're gonna talk about is the atmosphere itself. What causes pressure? Well, what pressure is, is the accumulated weight of a column of air over your head. And the, and the heavier that column of air is, then the more pressure that you get uh, here on Earth. So basically, if you have a, a large enough planet, you can keep the atoms that are in the atmosphere from bouncing away. So Earth has an atmosphere, but for instance, the smaller planets like uh, Pluto or the Moon or Mercury, these don't have an atmosphere. So first of all, you have to have a planet with enough mass to have an atmosphere. You could, for instance, have a world where people have Earth gravity similar to Earth's, but with an atmosphere that's much more dense. That's that's just like Venus, okay. So uh, that gives you a little bit of freedom as a writer to think about having a gravity similar to Earth, but a different atmospheric pressure. Uh, similarly, you can have, uh, you can have atmosphere, uh, planets like Earth's, but with much uh, thinner atmosphere, in that case like Mars. Mars is a gravity that's quite similar to Earth's, within a factor of two or so, but it doesn't have any real atmosphere to speak of. So there's a whole range of atmospheric densities, uh, runs a little bit independent of of the planet size up to a limit. Once you get a planet small enough, it's just not gonna have enough gravity to keep energetic atoms from bouncing out of the atmosphere at escape velocity. So uh, let's talk first about Raleigh scattering. What is Raleigh scattering? Well, Raleigh scattering is basically the, the, the thing that happens when light trans goes through a material and the photons start to bounce off the atoms. So we find that at wavelengths of light that are very bluish tend to scatter more readily off of atoms and wavelengths that are a lot longer, like red, those tend to penetrate very well through uh, media-like atmospheres. So when the sun is overhead, it's very quiet, and as it goes lower in the sky, it becomes yellow and then red, because you're starting to lose the blue and the green out of the sky. That's the reason why if you look in a direction other than the sun, you'll see a blue sky, because the light from the sun had to bounce that way and then bounce back to you. So when you look in a direction other than the sun, you see all the colors that uh, are missing from the sunlight. And when you look at the sun, you see the colors that are actually making it through the atmosphere. So they're a little bit complementary. So let's make the atmosphere a little bit thicker. And then as the sunlight is coming now through more and more atmosphere, the sun gets redder and redder. So even at noon, in a dense atmosphere, you're gonna have a very red sun. So this planet's gonna have a very sort of gloomy, uh, very sort of warm color temperature to the, uh, to the lighting. And in, in the regions other than the sun, it's gonna be, uh, a very deep blue, greenish, uh, almost a cyan type color. And that's going to, that's gonna of course uh, uh, depend on your height in the atmosphere. As you go up in the atmosphere, the, the illumination becomes more and more like Earth. If the sky's gonna become bluer, the sun's gonna become yellower. And so you can imagine that uh, you have a Earth where there are the poor people that live on the Earth's surface, the poor people live on the Earth's surface and they only ever see a red sun. But those who live up in this, the cloud cities, up in, the, up in these blimps, they can, they can see a, a blue sky with a yellow sun. And so you, you can start to stratify society vertically in, in the atmosphere of your planet. Um, you can also think about um, how that light will now affect the plant life. If I have plants that are living on the Earth's surface that, and, when, and all it's really getting are red and yellow light, it's not going to need to absorb the blue anymore. So in our, in our, in our plants, we have a, a spectrum where uh, the plants absorb the blue and the plants absorb the red and the green, they don't absorb, they reflect that back. So we see plants as being green. Well, in this world, they're going to need to use, plants are going to need to evolve to use every scrap of light available. So they're going, to, they're going to want to really eat the green and eat the red. So plants will either appear black or bluish black because the blue, they're not going to, they're not going to need. In a dense atmosphere, flight is easy. Because the atmosphere has so much more density to it, when that air deflects from a wing or uh, is, is deflected by the curvature of a wing, you get a much greater buoyant force. Think about how easy it, for you, it is for you in, in a swimming pool with just a few strokes to keep your body buoyant in the water. It's the same way. So as the density of the atmosphere goes up, you can go airborne at like 20 or 40 miles an hour with short little stubby wings. So basically, as the atmosphere becomes more dense, everything flies. So everything will have just 
sort of short stubby wings and, and a paddle tail and almost any animal will be able with even a little bit of effort to sort of become airborne. And that's sort of really unique to think about humans having wings and being able to jump off and glide and, and uh, you know, almost be able to, uh, to fly. So all these dreams of people like Leonardo da Vinci, the machines that he made that don't really work to fly, they actually will work on an atmosphere that's just a little more dense. So that's a lot of fun. So we can imagine ships being uh, not so skinny a fuselage, but being a lot broader and wider, like a manta ray. You know, everything's going to be broader, wider, and smoother. Uh, everything, of course, is going to have to be very aerodynamic because the forces from, from the, uh, the air resistance are going to be a lot larger. In fact, homes, the idea of having s vertical sidewalls on homes is not going to fly in a dense atmosphere. You're going to have your homes be very smooth, maybe almost subterranean. And uh, skyscrapers, of course, are definitely not going to work unless they're more like pyramids. So let's start to think about how to make our homes be able to withstand the great force of a dense atmosphere. Next thing you want to think about is, is evaporation of water. What happens when you have a lot more pressure is it's a lot harder for water to evaporate. Now that depends on the, the partial pressure of the water, uh, but assuming there's a, a decent amount of water on the planet, water is just not going to want to evaporate. So if I'm a human and I sweat, it's, it's, going to, it's going to be like the worst humid day ever. It's like the super mugginess of being in uh, like Louisiana. Your sweat just doesn't evaporate off your skin. So if I'm, I'm a thermal designer and I want to design a system that keeps a human cold, maybe it evaporates ammonia. It's very toxic, but ammonia evaporates at a lower temperature. So maybe people use different gases to help stay cool. Or maybe creatures that live on that planet do the same thing. And maybe their sweat is very toxic to humans because it has noxious chemicals like ammonia in there that will evaporate from their bodies. So that's pretty interesting. Um, the other thing is that you, you, you might find that there's a permanent cloud layer at some altitude in the atmosphere. So maybe below that cloud there, you never see the sun. And above that cloud there, you can see the sun. And just like these great pictures from Haleakala on Maui, where people can get up above the cloud layer and see the sun rise up above the clouds, it's an amazing experience. You can imagine your characters for the first time getting up above the cloud layer and seeing the sun for the first time. Uh, a lot of really creative things you can do with the dense atmosphere, talking about the sun. Um, again, heat flow goes uh, proportional to the density. So uh, when I'm in water, when water is colder than my body, I lose heat very rapidly. Same thing in a dense atmosphere. Uh, when it's cold, I'm going to lose heat very fast and need a lot better insulation. When it's hot, again, I can't get rid of my, uh, I can't get rid of my sweat as easily. I'm going to overheat very quickly. So that becomes very important. Uh, at certain times of the day, maybe people just have to be indoors or below ground. Um, interestingly, the speed of sound doesn't really depend on the density of the air, only really on the uh, speed the molecules are moving, which is really temperature dependent. So your, your speed of sound is going to be about the same. Uh, so you can keep your, your you know, normal human communication. You might find that people tend to have smaller lungs just because uh, it's very difficult to draw in a large volume of dense air. Again, uh, you can think about what color the oceans are going to be in this type of an atmosphere. When the, when the atmosphere above them is a little bit warmer of a color temperature, the oceans are going to take on a little bit more of that color temperature too. So a little more greenness rather than blueness to the oceans. And uh, all in all, it's a very interesting place. Your, your, your world could be very dry, could be very wet, could be very humid. Your plants could uh, be all cover, stuck to the ground and, and fight for ground cover, or they could be a very large, thick trunks that grow up. Um, either way, the, a dense atmosphere is a really exciting opportunity. I haven't seen a lot of science fiction novels that take place in a dense atmosphere. So be the first, create a really cool story. Maybe it's called Heavy. Maybe it's uh, about uh, people who are striving to you know, get to the higher you know, opportunities, get to the higher class by getting up to live in the clouds or above the clouds. Um, or maybe there's just two races that live at different altitudes. Uh, should be very interesting. Um, you can do a lot with transitioning between uh, climate zones as you move up in altitude with large mountains. All, it's just a great opportunity for a science fiction writer to have a lot of fun. So if you have any questions, just send me an email and we'll work it out together if there's extra physics you need to think about, like explosions or more complex things like that. So enjoy. Thanks for listening.